Welcome back to DXB Today. All eyes on a successful leadership and how to get the CEO mindset. And our next guest is a world-renowned specialist in the field of psychology, helping thought leaders enhance well-being in organizations and, of course, schools as well. Please welcome Dr. Louise Lambert to the show. Thank you welcome, so much. Doctor. How Thank are you? you? I'm great. Uh, it's so great to have you here. Um, the Director of Happiness Matters. Yes. Tell me exactly what your role entails. Yeah. So I'm an expert in positive psychology, mm -hmm. so that's my area. So I am a psychologist and I also do a lot of research in the field looking at empirical interventions that can help improve quality of life, life satisfaction and subjective well-being. So I've done a lot of those in schools, as, as you said. Mm -hmm. uh, I also do a lot of that in organizations, so developing programming, developing interventions and then testing to see if they work. So really trying to figure out what makes us happy. Yeah, I mean, Dr. Lambert, when it comes to success, I feel like people are always, well, they used to look at what you have, how big your house was, how nice your car is. I feel like now, and I don't know if this is unfortunate or not, they're starting to judge it on how busy you are, how, how constantly you are filling your time you are, how you're never home, how you're always busy, always posting on Instagram. Is that healthy? Not really. Okay. But it could be a sign of a happy life. So you're quite right. Initially, we would look at how successful somebody was, how much fame they had, how much status they had, how much money they made. And of course, nobody's going to say that's not important. But increasingly, people are asking different questions and saying, am I happy? Am I getting the most out of life that I could? Am I hanging around the people that bring out the best in me? Am I really satisfied with how my life looks and what I do on a daily basis? And leaders in particular, CEOs, are finding a lot of new research showing that a lot of them are saying, actually no they want a more meaningful life and happiness is becoming something more important for them as well i had a question Dr. Yeah. um talking about happiness and that journey when it comes to the mindset of the workforce i wanted to know from your personal approach how did you get involved in this field specifically so I did all my training in what we call mainstream psychology, the doom and gloom, I call it. So depression, anxiety, mental health issues, all the rest. And then when I was doing my doctorate, I took one course in positive psychology that just transformed my life. And I thought, this is it. It's the course I've been looking for. How to make life worthwhile and not just less miserable. So that's really where it started for me. And asking that different question, it's not enough to not be just not be miserable, that's not enough. We all want more in life than just to not be miserable. So it's really looking at how do we apply science so that we can get that in tangible ways. Now, Louise, you mentioned earlier how there's more and more research showing that happiness is the metric now. Yes. But do you see more and more companies nowadays actually agreeing to that and making an effort to, make, to build a happier atmosphere in the workplace? Yes. It's my job, so yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so I do a lot of that. So really, um, that is the new metric. So it's not just happiness per se, but it, it's life satisfaction, uh, subjective well-being. It is also the absence of mental health issues. It's the presence of good relationships, uh, psychosocial trust. There's a lot of factors that go into that. And increasingly, organizations are really recognizing that this is an asset. So it's not just people and deploying talents, but when people are happier, they bring their best selves, they bring that mindset, they bring that motivation, they bring that culture of trust and care and kindness to one another that has distinct business outcomes. I'm sure there are people watching right now saying, how can we sign up our company? <laughs> Happinessmatters.org, that's how you do that. <laughs> Uh, doctor, another question. Yeah. Uh, specifically here, where you know things are very fast-paced, very you know moving, uh, and the idea of happiness and mental health is becoming even more important in the growing generation. Yeah. How do you feel the landscape here in, in Dubai is when it comes to this, and how much important do you think it's going to be in the future? I think it's going to continue to be an important one, especially when we think about climate change. We think about regional difficulties. We'll call it that. Um, increasingly. Uh, people are stressed, people are burning out, people are also really anxious about the future. So mental health is always going to continue and probably a growing area of interest. But I also think there's a growing interest in how do we get the most out of life, precisely because it's fragile, it's short, you're only here once, and we deserve to be happy, we deserve to have that good life. So I think this is going to be growing on in, in both sides. Louise, let's talk about social media okay. because now it's very much a part of the business world. Uh, you know, to be a successful CEO means to also have a successful personal brand yeah. uh, online. Social media really affects happiness or not? 
I think like everything in tiny doses and with the right balance. Mm -hmm. So if you are living to post, then that's, we call these extrinsic reasons. So you're doing it for status, you're doing it for the likes, you're doing it for, look at me, look at me, to kind of gather that, that attention. Um, the drawback is that you might not actually be fully, be fully absorbed in the moment. You might not actually be savoring the moment. You might not actually be present in that moment and really enjoying those relationships and connecting with people because instead you're like, wait, don't move, click, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're missing a lot of that. On the other hand, there's a lot of research that shows the uh, expectation of posting makes you more mindful. So at the end of the day, you've gone out, you spent a beautiful afternoon with friends, and if you ask yourself, what is the one moment I want to capture, you will be more attentive to those moments, to listening what people are saying, to again, making those connections. So it can also help us be more present, but done to an extent, it can also help us not be present. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. And I know that uh, a lot of people, they can get caught up in the business world, they can get caught up trying to become partner, trying to get their business to be the most successful it can be. Uh, and then you wake up and you realize, oh, I'm not actually happy. I've been working like crazy for the past few years. But I have a lot of money. <laughs> mm -hmm. What yeah. advice would you give people to get back to that place of happiness? Is it finding new things to do or looking back in the past at what used to make them happy? Well, I think let's start, your question is great, is realizing and asking yourself the question, is this the life I want? So we are often driven by what society tells us to do. and. Again, we're at that shifting point, so there's still people in society who are chasing status, money, designer, brand, all of this. And then there's another portion that's saying, eh, I'm just not really feeling that anymore and I want something more. So asking yourself the question, are you happy with life? Are you satisfied? Do you feel like this is a worthwhile existence? If your answer is no, then you need to start making different decisions around that and asking yourself different questions. So it could be looking back to the past and asking yourself, when have you been happier or happiest? And this is a really powerful question that I often ask people. And generally the response is quite simple. I've been happier when I'm hanging out with my kids. I'm ha I was happiest when I was you know, walking along the beach. I'm happy when I'm reading a book. It's usually really simple stuff. Yet, we convince ourselves we need the complex and the complicated. I need the big car, I need the corner office. No, you don't. It's not gonna make you any happier. It'll get attention, mm -hmm. it's not gonna make you any happier. Dr. Louise, that's a great way to end. Thank you so much Thank for being you. on DXB today. My pleasure. Thank we'll you so much. Talk to you all day, I promise. You. <laughs> <laughs> but for right now, we must move on. Today's spotlight is on a company helping entrepreneurs, CEOs, and decision makers rise to the next level with the right tools. This is Munir Semneni from Oxygen Mastermind Group. Check it out. So my name is Munir Samnani, and I am a business coach. We do one-to-one -one coaching, corporate coaching and training. We run mastermind groups in mastermind. We run mastermind for teens, mastermind for entrepreneurs. And we've recently launched Mastermind Plus, which is a 20 million dirham plus turnover group. Mastermind is nothing but group of entrepreneurs who come together to help and support each other group. So they say when an entrepreneur starts the journey, they are good technicians. Entrepreneurship requires a lot of skills. There's a lot of things that people need to do. When they jump into entrepreneurship, they realize that they don't have those skills or the tools. And this is exactly what we as business coach try to fill up. We have certain tools and techniques that helps businesses grow to next level. We find the gaps and we allow every entrepreneur to fill up those gaps. So those principles help them grow their business from one point to another. So we are actually filling up a business growth gap in this market. So some of our major milestones and the flagship program has been Mastermind. Uh, we have 100 plus members in our Mastermind community. And another one is Mastermind Plus, which is a 20 million dirham plus turnover group. Uh, the portfolio is from startups to 350 million dirhams of turnover. And another milestone we have started achieving uh, from last year is we have started giving franchises of Mastermind in this part of the world and the other parts of the world as well. So uh, some of the challenge that I was facing initially when I started my business is finding my niche. And so we were doing a lot of things, but they say as you start doing your business, over a period of year, you try to find the niche. So our niche has been business coaching. It took us some time to find what are we good at and what kind of clientele um, can we work with. 
so that were the two things that we found in difficult in the initial part of the business but now after over a period of 12 years we know exactly what our niche is and who are our clients i think the best thing about dubai is dubai welcomes each and every person um, and it allows people to do business right if you really want to grow yourself i think dubai is an ideal place because you tend to meet a lot of nationality you tend to come across a lot of opportunity and if you really think you can do a difference i think dubai is an ideal place to do because it has all the resources that it allows you to grow so i think dubai is an ideal place to do business or any other thing if you want to take yourself to next level That was interesting. Now next up, we will be talking about leadership, development and culture change with executive coach Marissa Kamal. So stay with us right here. We've got also music coming up on DXB today.